Hey, this is the first of several videos using this new machine that I just started welding with. It's a Prime Weld MTS 200 and it's a beast. Since we just added it to the store from now until the end of the month, until 831, if you order this machine, you'll get a free basic stubby kit. So it comes with a air-cooled 17 torch with a valve. That basic stubby kit will work great with that torch. Let's do it. This is a MTS 200 from Prime Weld. It's a multi-process machine that does MIG, lift arc TIG, and stick. Here's a real quick look with what comes with it. MIG gun, genuine CK 17 torch with a valve, and a stick stinger. You know the charts that come on the inside of the panel of almost every machine these days, the MIG setting chart? Well, they, they included a laminated one in the box too. And so I'm gonna use that chart for 18 gauge, eighth inch thick and quarter inch and see how the machine does using the chart settings. Let's do it. This machine's got a lot of features like synergic settings and things like that, but the biggest thing that helped me was to read the instructions and figure out how to put it in manual mode. And the way to get it in manual mode is not something you'd figure out by yourself. You've got to read the instructions. The way to do it is just holding these two little arrow buttons down at the same time and that's all you got to do and it kicks it into manual mode where you can just wire feed speed and voltage separately. There's an additional setting here that you get into by pressing that main button there and that's inductance. We'll do a deep dive on inductance in a future video. Okay so now let's start testing different settings. I'm going to set up a simple T-joint on each one and starting with this 18 gauge the chart tells me that the settings are 16.2 volts, 108 inches a minute with 035 wire. So let's go. After I get the piece tacked up, some textbooks as well as websites recommend pushing on really thin metal, but I've always had better luck pulling. That's been my experience, so that's what I'm doing here. I had a machine one time that would barely even weld at 16 volts. This one's surprisingly smooth at 16 volts. A nice smooth arc with hardly any spatter. Not blowing through, even with 035 wire. I bet it would do really good with 023. That would be my preferred wire diameter for something this thin. All right, let's take a look at eighth inch thick now. The chart settings lead us to 18 volts, 236 inches a minute, 035 wire. I'm going to use a slight push angle here. To tell you the truth, on something like this, I'd kind of prefer a slight pull angle. But I, I've tested so many of these and I just see there's not that much difference except a slight push angle like I'm doing right here does tend to make for a little bit more spatter than a pull angle. That's kind of why I like to use a slight pull a lot of times. That's yielding about 120 amps on the average which kind of makes sense for eighth inch thick material. I've got half inch hash marks here so you can kind of tell my travel speed. I'm not flying along, but I'm not creeping along either. So the settings weren't bad for that. I feel like the wire feed speed was a little bit high. Now let's do some quarter inch. Settings for quarter inch, 22 and a half volts, 472 inches a minute. That sounds awfully high to me on the wire feed speed, but I'm just gonna follow the chart. We'll see what it does. Probably kind of transitioning to globular here a little bit. Lots of spatter. But it does look like it's, it's, it's got a good punch to it. A lot of arc force pushing down into that root of the joint. I just don't like the, the arc. I don't like the sound of the arc. It's just rough. It's violent. I think I could reduce that wire feed speed, still get penetration, would get a lot less spatter, would probably look better. So I'm not crazy about the, the recommended settings for quarter inch. I think that a slight pull angle might actually help the spatter at this high of a wire feed speed but that's for another video. But let's cut and etch it and just see what it, what it did. I've done tons of these kind of tests on fillet wells like this, and I find it to be an extremely valuable learning tool. All you need to do is just get somewhat of a polish, not like a mirror polish, but just get rid of the sawtooth marks. And I'm using a little nidle etch here, and it really brings out that weld nugget. One side of this was used for arc shots and then I let it cool completely and did the other side so they look very similar. That's a really good example of how a MIG settings chart is just a starting point. They're not always the best settings. A lot of them are really high on the wire feed speed, in my opinion anyway. After messing around with it a little bit, I settled in at a fairly good setting of 20 volts, 310 inches a minute. Let's run the same joint, both push and pull and see what happens. 
A short stick out helps a lot when you're trying to get penetration on a joint like this. Stick out is the distance between the contact tip and the arc. I get best results on short circuit when mine is about a half inch or less. Let's do the push angle now. I'm not using much of an angle here. In fact, it looks, it looks almost dead straight in at some angles, but some of that's the camera effect. I'm trying to keep a short stick out, therefore I can't see the puddle all that well. I can see the leading edge of the puddle. Sometimes that's all you need to see. I've got to let this cool down now, and then we'll cut each one, do a quick polish and etch, and we'll compare the penetration on each. Got just a little bit of prep work to do on these, but before I show you each cut and etch sample, let's take a quick look at that arc shot again so we can correlate it with the penetration profile. Okay, let's swab etch it with some 5% nidle. That's what the pull angle got us, 20 volts, 310 inches a minute. And now let's take a look at that push arc shot. Still at 20 volts, 310 inches a minute. That gives us a slightly different profile, not necessarily better or worse, just different. And once again, here are the ones with 472 inches a minute wire feed speed and 22 and a half volts. For me, with short circuit MIG, the biggest difference is if I pull, I can see the puddle better. If I push, I can see where I'm going better. I do both. I push, I pull, but I try to limit my gun angle and a dead nuts 90 degree works pretty good too. If you're talking about spray, then yes, a push angle seems to work a lot better than a pull. I've got some more videos lined up for this thing, some more uh, you know, vertical up, overhead, lift arc, TIG, and stick. Should be fun testing this thing out. We'll see you next video. Hey, just a reminder, I support these videos with sales from my online store at weldmonger.com. If you wanna learn more about anything used in this video, or other products like tungsten, filler metal, gloves, just visit wellmonger.com. Thanks for watching.